as compared to the spring, does this now feel like your football team? Yes. It's kids to play. Uh, the roster is uh, really talented. I love going to practice each day, witnessing the battles that we have at certain positions. Receiver battles, offensive line, defensive line, defensive backs, corners, pickers. It's, it's, it's unbelievable, man. And I, I love the depth that we're displaying right now. I really do. It's a whole new team. And the thing about it, instead of asking me about the roster change and all that, why don't you ask the guys that we held over? That would be a good place to start. Ask them how much better this team looks, how much closer this team is. Ask them. Let them tell them. Coach, Joe Rico, my life sports radio is the final word. Can you talk a little bit about you know, where Colorado is headed as far as this kind of craziness going on with college football? What craziness are you talking about? Well, just different teams moving. Man, I don't care nothing about no different teams moving. Up. We try to win, man. I don't okay. care where we play. Okay, I, don't, I don't care what conference, who we're playing against, we're trying to win. All this is about money, you know that. It's about a bag. Everybody's chasing a the bag. Then you get mad at the players when they chase it. How's that? How do, how do the grown-ups get mad at the players when they chase it when the college is chasing it? Yeah, that's true. I, I, just I know, yeah, I know that's true. A couple, couple more teams moving today. You know what I mean? It's yeah. crazy. Yeah, same teams are talking about us, right? Woo! <laughs> 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 Oh, Lord, it was good. Hey, Coach, how you doing? How you doing, man? I'm doing all right. How are, are you, you better than I am? I don't know. We'll you know see. what? I think I can get you in the 30 right now. I just got to make it happen. Yeah, let me see. What kind of scooter you got? A nice little one. Yeah, I think my tire's a little bigger. I got you. I think so. <laughs> uh, in the spring, you talked about when you're building this team, you want yes. it to be bigger than the team. As yeah. it pertains to brotherhood, yes. know, coaches having that relationship with players. And they are. How have you seen that evolve now that you guys are here? It, it's unbelievable, man. Even uh, you know, with the guys we brought in the spring, the unity that they're displaying, as well as the unity with the other guys that have come in uh, in the summer, it's unbelievable. Like, you got to see them uh, at lunch, uh, breakfast, dinner, just around the complex, out around town. Uh, these guys are really solid, and they're, they're really unified. And they know what the common goal is, and that's to win. And they want to go pro. They want to get to the next level. They want to be a, a, a pillar in the community. Uh, I, I love what I'm seeing. The coaches are doing a phenomenal job of, of, of blending everything and, and meshing everything together. But these kids, we got to give them credit for what they're accomplishing. It, it's not an all-white table at lunch. You know, it's not an all-black table at lunch. It's a team, and I love that. Brian, go ahead. Coach Brian Howell from Bowling Daily Camera. How you doing? Good. How are you? Good. Uh, this, this spring, you obviously had a whole bunch of new guys in the spring, you had new coaches, all the new guys in the summer. How is everything meshing together and what improvements have you seen, not only players, but coaching staff? Well, meshing together, we just talked about that. These kids are unbelievably, uh, grown-ups have a problem with getting along because you guys are set in your ways. Kids don't. You guys have the problem because you're all judging each other. What you're driving, who's making money, who doing this here, who doing that. Kids don't. Kids don't have the same problems that we have. You drop your darn kids off in a new school, within a couple of days, what are they going to be? Oh, my God, I met little Holly, and she is unbelievable. I mean, that's just how it is. Grown-ups are with the foolishness. Kids are, man, they just want to be happy and play ball and realize their dream and accomplish that. So I'm happy with that. The coaches are unified, man. We unified, solidified. We got a great coaching staff. Uh, shoot. Uh, we we added uh, Coach Sherman, and he's doing a Sherman. He's doing a phenomenal job right now. He really is. Love what he's bringing to the table. Ariel, go ahead. Ariel, student of Nine News. Uh, Coach, what's going into the, into the decision to kind of keep practice closed as of now? And are you planning to allow us? Every, to I, I, see everything. Us? You got we got YouTube. We have about four people out there on YouTube channels. You see everything, everything we do. You see everything we do. So it's not just keeping you out. We just we just want to work. You know, we get hoopla, we get, we, we're talking about everywhere. So sometimes we just want to get the work in. We'll put out what we want to put out, and you guys go catch it and run with it and do your thing. We're going to let you in. And we let them in another day, didn't we? We had a little issue. That was my fault, so we're working on it. Yeah, yeah, we let them in another day. We're going to let you in. Any plan to uh, let us see what you have in the future uh, so, we can, so we can see you guys work and see what the team oh, has? Oh, most definitely. Like when do you want to come? Anytime. You, okay. you, you name a time and I'll be there. I got there. you. I got you. I got you. We'll let you in. Go ahead, Ryan. Hey, Coach Ryan. Coming from How you doing, Ryan? Good, man. How are you? Good. Um, a lot of coaches are 
you know, want to say, hey, we don't hear the outside noise, I don't hear anything that's going on. You're not adverse to saying, I hear it and I'm, and I'm keeping receipts. Why is that? But that's who I am. This is what the player. You think I'm going to change? No, I don't change, man. I mean, I'm consistent with who I am, what I am, how I am. I'm uh, close to being 56 years old, looking good and feeling good, talking good, walking good, with a limp, you know, but I, I love life. I love the life I live and I live the life I love. So I'm not adverse to the, the nonsenses of life. A lot of coaches sit up there and lie to you because they want you to believe something else about who they are. You know who I am. I've been consistent with who I've been for a long time. Now, I've been in the light what, since I was, what, 18 years old? This ain't nothing new to me. Nick, go ahead. Nick Rothschild, Denver 7. How you doing, Nick? I'm great, Coach. Um, I think you did this at Jackson, but I wanted to know the thinking behind the social media handles on the back of the practice. Everybody Jesus. wants to be noticed. Everybody wants to be followed. Everybody wants to uh, be that person. So why not help them? Who don't want anybody in here don't want more followers? Why are you getting on social? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you want more followers, right? So why don't I help them? That, that's my obligation to my team. I help them. So that's why. Go ahead, Jake. It's a new age thing, man. Everybody's on social. You might as well help them. I wish we could do it in the game. <laughs> hey, Coach. How are you doing, sir? Good to see you. I'm just curious about Jaquez Robinson and Mike Kennedy. Just uh, one, one at a time. Jaquez is doing well. Uh, he's going to play a little corner tomorrow for us just to give us a little more depth because he's versatile like that. Um, and uh, Mr. Kennedy, he, he's getting there. He's getting there. Well, just he, the he, he's, he's full speed. He, he made a play the other day, back, come out the back, go right to the sideline, and he was rolling. I mean, hopping. He, he, he can run. He can fly. Uh, his pursuit is unbelievable, and I like the passion that he comes to work with. And he loves the game. How they helped instill this new culture you're trying to bring in here? Well, I think the new culture, it was already here when they got here. Yeah, it was already here. They just got to be a part of it. Go ahead, Mark. Mark Kissel, the Denver Post. How, How you doing, doing, sir? I'm good. Um, we've asked you about unity mm -hmm. and, and cohesion of the team. You talked about everybody from schools to players chasing mm -hmm. the bag. Is part of the unity of this team the realization that you're doing things a different way or aren't the way? I don't say it's different. I just think it's the way I do things. I'm not going to say it's different. I just think it's the way I do things. I've learned from a multiplicity of coaches that did some really phenomenal things. I take certain things from the coach Dave Cable, my youth coach, um, Coach Ron Hoover, my high school coach, Bobby Bowden, Mickey Andrews, and so forth, and Coach Shanahan, Coach Ray Rose, I mean, Coach, uh, all the coaches that I've played for, I've taken little bits and pieces and, and, and incorporated them in what, what my dream and my vision is for this team. So I glean from, from, from quite a bit. And, and I like what we're doing. I like what we're doing. And there's certain things, I, I played the darn game, man. Mm -hmm. Like I know, what they, I, I've told you several times, I've said it in every seat. I've been the parent, you know, getting the kid recruited. I've been the coach and the player. And so it's not a, a viewpoint that I hadn't seen. So I love that advantage point. I do. I really do. And I've been in the media for darn it 20 years. I know what you guys are ready to do and what you guys want to. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Chasing the bag. Can uh -huh. that be unifying red? Because us oh. in the media, everybody. I mean, schools, coaches, players. That's the life, man. We, we all want to be comfortable, right? You know the only thing that separates me from many people or, or the fluent from people is having the option. I have the option to go to a car lot to get what I want to get. I have the option to go to a shopping plaza and get what I want. That's an option. Everybody wants options, right? That's what we're searching. And peace, right? You all want peace and you all want options. Isn't that what you're searching? Or somebody just say, oh, I just love my job. Oh my God, I just love it. Man, please, you want the option. But I really enjoy what I do. I really do. This is not work to me. There's no way you come here and look at those dirt windows. And I'm on that beautiful practice field with the uh, beautiful grass and uh, it's manicured. And I'm looking at mountains. Man, you got to be kidding me. This ain't no darn job. This is a blessing to be out here amongst these kids and leading them in the right direction and posing as their navigational system. It's a blessing to me. And I take it serious. But Coach, uh, we just recently learned Zach Blackwood is going to go back to his JUCO. Uh, Say it again. Zach Blackwood is going to go back to his JUCO. We just learned that the other day. But uh, 
uh, is there any concerns about death? I know you have like some scholarship spots open. Is there any uh, concerns Wait, about you death? You know what I mean? He's talking about scholarship spots. How many people we got on the roster right now? 100 and what? 115. 115. You think we need more people? <laughs> You can only, well, you can only travel, what, 71? 70, 72, maybe. 72. So that means that's an extra 35 or 30, whatever it is, and, you know, whatever. What is it, baby girl? Oh, yeah, that's right, I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot. We wouldn't get to the math of the standards. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah, shoot, we don't need that. What we save that was? What we save those? Because we're about to win. We're about to really win. And we're going to need more recruits next week, right? Next year. Yeah. All right, think about that. Fourth thing. We can only put 11 on field at a time. Think about that. Everything we, everything you can come up with, we've thought out, man. I'm not new to this, man. I'm true to this. I've been doing this for a minute. I know you think I haven't been at this level for a minute, but I've been in football for the last how many years? A long time. All right. I know what I'm doing. Thank you. Go ahead. Hi, Coach. Thank how you doing? Sports Good. Good to see you again. So when you're sitting in meetings with Sean Lewis and Charles Kelly and you're installing this offense. And defense. And, yeah, offense and defense. Uh -huh. What kind of advisory role do you play? What kind of influence? A tremendous role. In shaping this a offense tre and defense? Tre tremendous. I know what I want to see. I know what I like. I know these kids. Um, I have relationships with them. I know what it should look like. Um, I've been in a multitude of levels. I've played for a multiplicity of coaches. And I know what I want. I know what I want. So, and those guys are doing a wonderful job of uh, being who they are, but also just playing to the strengths of our team, of the personnel. You can want to do this and that, but if you don't have the personnel, you're not. I wish you would have seen the display of the receivers that we saw at the other day. It is unbelievable. It's not a receiver on the starting unit right now that can't take that thing 80 to 85 yards to hit the head against the current goalposts. It's unbelievable. And it was on display today. Uh, what do you feel like is your biggest challenge right now in installing that offense? Uh, we don't have challenges. We present challenges. Matt, go ahead. Coach, since seeing what your quarterback and your offensive coordinator did in the spring to what they're doing now, how do you feel like their relationship has developed over uh, the last few well, years? Well, it, 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 it's really the, the, the job of the coordinator to get to know the talent. It's not the talent to know the coordinator. We got to get to know these young men. They're helping us with it, okay? So we got to get to know them and understand who they are and do the things that they're capable of doing and also have command on what we're trying to accomplish as well. Um, when you talk about Shador, Shador has played a darn game, man. Shador is smart as a whip. We got to take advantage of that. He's been very successful before he got here. We got to glean from some of the things that he did to make it to this point and make sure he's comfortable with the offense. And the main thing, really, we just got to protect the kid. If we keep him upright, I can't wait to you see what he does, especially with the receivers, plethora of receivers that we have that can straight out ball and they can run like the wind. Hey, Coach uh, Tyler King, Denver Gazette. Um, you guys recently had Russell Wilson, some other Broncos yeah. players out on Folsom Field working out. I'm just curious, how important is that to kind of for the players in your program to, to see that up close to personal and just build the relationship with the Broncos being so close as well, you guys it's, are? It's not just the relationship. First of all, Sean Payton and I are really close. We're, we're tight. He's a good man, great coach. I can't wait to see what they do. Um, Russell reached out and wanted to come over and bring some of the young men. And uh, we're also familiar with a lot of the men that plays on that team. So for him to come over and want to use our facilities, it was a blessing because I want our kids to see what a pro looks like. How does a pro work? Um, how do they go about their business? And that was phenomenal for them to see for two days straight. And I thank Russell and all the guys that came out. And the guys were so pleasant, man. I think every last one of them shook my hand and thanked me for allowing them on our field. And that was a blessing to us. And they, they thought I was blessing them. They were blessing us because our kids got to see them come in the weight room and work out. And, uh, going to indoor and get some more workouts, and they worked out for a length of time. That was really good. I wish we could do more of that in the next offseason. Go ahead. Uh, How are you doing, sir? Chad is with Associated Press. Um, you went through a couple of health scares uh, uh -huh. a couple of months ago. Just how physically are you doing? How do you feel? I see you still have uh, the food. Yeah, I lost a few steps, but I'm still proud. I lost a few steps, but I'm still proud. Um, I should be able to run out with the team in Fort Worth. That's the goal, and we're going to eclipse it. It's going to happen. So they, they have a, uh, we have some wonderful doctors, man, 
wonderful staff, wonderful trainers that are committed to getting me healthy as well as the players uh, and the staff. But I'm going to run out with the team in Fort Worth. And I, I just uh, recall you having played through some foot injuries you know, yes, during sir. your career. And is this a, uh, like a residue from, from those um, No, no. Blood clots, it had nothing to do with me playing. And it had nothing to do with the, uh, what they call it, the pandemic thing. What's the shot? It had nothing to do with the shot. It's hereditary. So people should know that. My uncle passed away with uh, blood clots. My other uncle almost passed away with blood clots. My mother has blood clots. So it's, it's hereditary, unfortunately. Go ahead, Ariel. I'm curious, is Dylan Edwards everything that he was advertised? More. The kid, I think he's putting on 12 to 15 pounds. He's a dog. He wants all the smoke. He wants the ball. He's not just a bounce guy that bounces outside. He can run between the tackles. Dylan Edwards is a phenomenal, electrifying player. We plan on having him returning kicks as well as getting the ball to him as much as possible. And then my second question to that, not a scholarship player, but Charlie Offerdahl back there. What Charlie, I call him Charlie Alton Ball because that's what he did today. He got in there, hit it up, broke, uh, and had like a, I think a 50 yard run and they tackled him down and he, but he put us in scoring position. Uh, Charlie's a dog, man. I, I love his commitment. I love his swagger. I'm not crazy about his mustache, but everything else I, I love about Charlie, man. He's, he's a good, good young man. I wish every walk-on kid, a kid that's trying to live their dream, could could understand his mentality. I love Charlie. A couple more, go, Brian. Coach, I know the, year, the, the work goes year-round, mm -hmm. but once you guys get to fall camp, does the mindset shift because you know that the season's right around the corner? Why would the mindset shift? Mindset shift. We play right no, we're like, we practice to win, we play to win, we work to win. It's all about winning and developing and getting these kids to the next level. That never changes. No matter what time of the year, that never changes. It is what it is, and we won't change that. The standard is the standard, and we're going to stick to the standard. Go ahead, Craig. Hey, Coach. Uh, Craig Meyer from the CU Sports Report. Um, there are varying projections for this team. You know, take the length and the well. Now, who cares uh, about that? Who, who, gets right? who, who, gets right? who gets it right? Who gets it right? Who really gets it right? You guys got it right to be in Vegas you. right now. You've been in Vegas right now at the window with a birthday suit on, man. Come on. Nobody gets it right. Y'all projecting what you guys, nobody knows what's going to happen. I don't know what's going to happen. I, I, I feel like I know what's going to happen, but I don't know what's going to happen. Yeah, not working with a certain win total or any kind of record here. What's your expectation for this team? To win. To win. To win, develop, get these guys to the next level and have them to be uh, men, not boys. That's my expectation, and we're going to clip that. We're going to win. We're going to win. We're going to win. I don't know how to say it. I wish I could say it in several different languages, but we're going to win. Coach, it seems like a lot of people have had opinions about you, the program, the transfer portal, whatever it right. seems to be. As a player, did you ever internalize that and put that energy into proving no. them wrong? Or what is your mindset when people have opinions? What do you do with that? Do you just block it out or do you use it? I don't care. Look at me. What about me would make you think that I care about your opinion of me? Your opinion of me is not the opinion that I have of myself. You ain't make me, so you can't break me. You didn't build me, so you can't kill me. I, I, you know what? God, God established me. So you ain't nothing you can do to me. I, I've been dealing with this foolishness since Pee Wee football, man. I've been him. I've been a difference maker, a game changer. I've been that guy. So what will change now that I'm coaching? Not a darn thing. I'm not even playing the game, and you got an opinion of me. I'm not even on the field. But I'm pretty sure I get every darn coach I'm playing against, head coaches, <laughs> and anything you want to do. But I, 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 I love it, but I don't care. And I wish the world thought like that. Youngsters, if you're out there right now, do not give a darn what opinion people have of you. As long as that opinion is not consistent of that of yourself. You be you. I'm not planning to make you feel good about me. I already feel good about me. I'm good. Message for the youngsters out there. And the old, old school, not old fools. Last one. Last one. Go ahead, man. Have you decided on your theme music this year? Yeah, yeah, we already did that. Uh, halftime? Halftime. 
Halftime. We got two, though. Uh, Halftime. Halftime, and I think in Snoop and Pop, you know, Gangster Party, you know, trying to find me a country one, too, that fits, so, you know, mm. we, could, we could appease everybody. <laughs> but I like those two right now. I think the band has learned those, too, by the way. Okay. Yeah. Don't sleep on the band. Don't sleep on the band. Is that a black man sneaking over there? That one you was. Okay, thank you. The white man. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> sleeping on that band. We good? Yeah, we're good. Hey, Thanks, I appreciate y'all. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. Thanks so much.